sometimes we need to call the doctor when the market is at a crossroads. So we have called Dr. RSI, Andrew Cardwell, to join us and have a discussion about the current market. Hello, my name's Bruce Frazier and you are watching Power Charting. Andrew, welcome. Good morning to you out there. We're halfway through our morning. Yes, we, <laughs> we, we start and we get talking before we uh, begin the recording and it just, uh, the next thing you know, the day is gone. That's right. Yeah, so, well, it's we're true. glad you're here. It's truly a New York minute here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, uh, before we start, uh, one brief announcement, and that is that uh, Damon Pavlados is going to present for the TSAA in a webinar upcoming for members and it's uh, using market profile and volume analytics with traditional technical analysis. It's going to be a great program. And uh, just uh, at the homepage, join, become a member. Everybody should be a member of TSAA, not-for-profit society oriented towards technical analysis education. So uh, with that, let's get started. Andrew and with Hartwell. Yes, go ahead. And with us, it's not only education, it's entertainment when we do a show. <laughs> well, you, you can't go through 40 years of this without trying to be entertained some of the time. That's right. And yeah. entertain, inform, and educate. Yes. Well, it's, uh, I've had many years in the classroom, and Andrew, you're a great educator, and uh, it just makes the, the whole journey that just more special and fun. And Follow the yellow brick road, right? Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. So Andrew is the developer of the Cardwell RSI Edge, which uh, you may be familiar with from prior programs or from other uh, courses that you've done with Andrew. He began his career in 1978. I'm an oldie. <laughs> you, you are an oldie. And uh, Andrew is a, um, a great educator. He has students in 28 countries. Uh, his students love his courses, and they will refer uh, other students to the courses. And as Andrew says, 70% of his students have been referred by other students. They're never prior students, uh, Andrew. So yeah, They're current they, students. Always. I still coach. I, I work as a coach for this team now. Well, and they're, your, your people are very fortunate. And I... I'm fortunate to have you as a dear friend, and I'm glad you're here. The one thing I want to say is that they are currently doing work on Andrew's uh, webpage, and so if you would like to go to his website, use Correct. this link here. Also, you can email Andrew and certainly uh, sign up for his uh, Twitter feed. Okay, so with that, uh, Andrew, I'm going to turn the screen over to you and let's get started and talk about current market conditions. So okay. here we go. Thank you, Bruce. I enjoy um, the time we have. Um, let's share and let's see what we have. Everybody go. Talking. I can see it. Yeah, I bet everybody's going crazy with everything we have going on, not just in the technical world, but in the geopolitical world. Um, the tweets flying back and forth, the trade war, we'll call it, um, it could get worse. It could get even more volatile. So you need to read the charts. And I don't share, I share my interpretation or translate, I guess is a better word, what I've seen in markets over the last 40 years. And for those who are listening for the first time, I did it with pencil, paper, and graph paper, calculating spread uh, RSI values every afternoon for 10 years before I got a computer. And the market will show you what it wants to show you to lead your way if you know enough to follow it and to read it. As I've told Bruce before, one of my Drewisms is uh, you don't know what you don't know until you need to know it. Now, I know that sounds confusing, 
but it's your money. Get yourself an education and learn how to read what the market is showing you. All I do with my classes is teach how to interpret what the market is telling you is going to happen. It's price, momentum, time, and sentiment all rolled into one. And that's not a plug for my courses. I don't sell courses, I offer help. So with that being said, this is one of my go-to charts. Uh, this top chart, it's got some proprietary tools, but overall, these are not Bollinger Bands, these are bands we do on moving averages, the highs and lows. The green line is the nine period moving average. Now, if I zoom out. And this is a daily, this is daily bars right now. Daily bars. If I zoom out, you'll see how when they do average that nine period gets above the, what we call the high line, it's a strong trend. And the more you trade, the more you risk. So when you make a trade, know what your risk is before you make the trade. To me, it's always more important, where am I wrong? I think it's going up, great, but where am I willing to admit I'm wrong? And I always tell people, you can win a batting title, batting 350 in baseball. You're only gonna get a hit 35 out of 100 at bats. So traders tend to hold on dollar cost average when it moves against them and just make the situation worse because now you're losing it twice as fast. So you owe yourself an education because knowledge is power and today's technicals will write the headlines for tomorrow. Um, one of my favorite charts is just a plain bar chart and being able to see the overall trend. Anybody can see, oh, that made a low back here, but most people don't realize it till it's moved. Get an idea where that low is, and this RSI is, I've been with my best friend, I guess, um, for 40 years. The approach doesn't change, only the names of the markets. So I wanted to share this because there's so much going on with the chart, people are calling for double tops, and could be going sideways for a while, but overall, just a couple of little tricks that I use and teach is everybody's, oh, I know RSI, you sell 70, you buy 30. No, that's not necessarily the case. That's what Wells' original work was. You look for bearish divergence at the 70 level, you look for bullish divergence down around 30. They are just, when bull and bear divergences show up like we had here, just a regular arrow. Okay, price had gone up to new highs, but the RSI did not. It failed to confirm that new high. That's a bearish divergence. That is not necessarily a reversal signal. And down at the bottom is my own personal RSI, which I call the CFG. And it showed the same type of divergence. And then we had another rally, a sell off, and then a rally back up, but we never really went below 30. And sometimes you'll see them on TV or, or webinars. People are trying to teach my work and they say, oh, it's at 30, it's time to buy. No, I have what's called range rules. 80 and 40 for uptrends, 60 and 20 for downtrends. So if it goes below 40 and starts dropping, and these are two moving averages on the RSI that I use, when they drop below 40, then you're starting to get acceleration to the downside, like we've had in big, strong moves. So the first thing you look for is for the Where RSI the, itself to fall below 40, and then you well, look- Well, just identify what the range is. Is it in the 80-40? Here it got up to about 76. I guess what I'm saying is, is that if you're in an 80-40 uh, uptrend range rule, and then all of a sudden, the, the RSI falls below 40 after being in the upper range. It's a range shift. So That's a range that. shift. And so you, you. Same as if it breaks, if it breaks 60 on the upside and you see that nine moving average, it's a nine period simple on close. It goes above 60. You're starting acceleration. Like we had way back in January this year, we made a low and the RSI come up and it crossed and it crossed the 50 level. Then the RSI got up to 70 and only came down to about 48. Went up again. You can see right through here, 
uh, let's see, 40 would be right about here. So it never went below, the RSI never went below 40. But so it's in see, the upper, uh, uh, upper range, upper range right area, and it's confirmed by the moving average, the nine period. Right, that nine period tells you when you're going into acceleration, and up here is about 80. And you can see when it got up near 80, it got a little extended and came back down. Now, back in uh, the in July of this year, uh -huh. uh, and this was uh, covered in power charting, we were doing point figure analysis of that top area where you have a divergence in the RSI, you just drew that. Uh -huh. and that count, that point figure count that we took intraday went right down into the area of the lows that it fell to very quickly. Right. And it was a great, it was just a great point figure count, but I love the notion here, just thinking about combining these two um, powerful methodologies, is that when you have a, you had a, an upthrusting action at the July peak, where it made a minor new high, and you had divergence from the RSI, also accompanied with a point and figure count that had a pretty dramatic uh, count for a move, in this case, a decline. Mm -hmm. And then you combine that with the RSI, which is diverging. And that's a very interesting uh, set of combinations here that could be uh, utilized. Now, here recently, and I want people to go back and at least watch the first part of power charting from last week, is that in the month of September, you can see here that there's a classic distribution that formed in the month of September. And now that didn't have an upthrust at the end but we took two, actually three point figure counts of that area in the S&P, and uh, it went right to the uh, intermediate counts and bounced. Worked beautifully, and you can see that work from last week's episode, but notice what's going on in the RSI. The mm -hmm. RSI has gone from being uh, pretty, uh, uh, in a, at a pretty high level and has started to decline and make lower highs with uh, the index itself. So, um, Andrew, I'm just uh, throwing that out as a possible uh, combination of these two great methodologies. Well, I, th I think so. You and I have yeah. talked before. A lot of times, you know, like this back here is what I call one of my positive reversals. The RSI got the price sold off hard. The RSI got lower than it was prior but it became more overextended at a higher price, which is what I share in my coursework and what I'm known for, the positive and negative reversals. I take the difference and add it to the high. So this technically, the way I approach it with the, my work is it should have gone to new highs. So that's a positive reversal saying it should have turned up and chopped around to confuse everybody before it actually took off. But if you notice, when it went up this next time, this blue line is drawn at about 60, 59 to 60. The range was starting to shift. It wasn't able to get back above 60. Even the moving average come up and bumped its head on 60 and it's declined. So it's an area right now where I think extreme caution. If something, you know, with all the tweets going back and forth about the trade war and you know, somebody not happy and then, oh yes, we're gonna have an, an agreement. No, we're not. And I mean, that's just part of it. Yeah. Jeff Kennedy always says the market will do the most it can to uh, adversely affect the most people. And I'm just warning people because we had talked about, we put out warnings back in July that this market was not what you think it is. And then it sold off and everybody was calling, well, is this the end of the world? Is the market over? I said, patience. You need patience and discipline to be a trader. I said, no, it's just the first leg down. Turns into a positive, it should have gone to new highs. That's what I call a positive reversal failure. Mm -hmm. So this previous, this last low, we had a nice low close. I drew a blue line in here. That's a key support level, right around 2846. If it takes that out with the nine, declining uh 
we're probably going to test these loads. And if that's taken out, there's really no support until you get down to 2,800 and then 2,750. If you take this whole point and figure count in the month of September on the S&P, which uh, we've done that and published it, that count goes down to your lower support line. Mm -hmm. And so we've already touched the intermediate counts and that produced a pause. And, uh, and so the market has uh, gone into a short-term trading range, but there is a larger count for lower prices that goes down to this deeper support. Well, I, can, I can see it going down to the lower one, 2750. Yeah. And that's where the count is. And with these positives, when these positive pattern now, in this case, it was a longer term positive. I draw what I call a positive reversal trend line. You notice that nine on close, the green line, come down, stayed above that trend line and kept it going to the upside. Mm. But recently, it broke our center point, which we call the number, and it's in the process of breaking the low line. And if it breaks that low line, we're gonna have a lot further to go because that'll confirm these lower targets and also um, confirm your lower targets because the Wyckoff and RSI combinations, when you and I have the same numbers and I, that's what I enjoy about our friendship. We do laugh, we do entertain, but we try and inform people ahead of time. It could be headed this way and now we're starting to get more confirmation. Well, those spooky moments scare me. I love them. When everything lines up. <laughs> it's like, I just, as long as I've been doing this, the RSI will talk to you if you know how to listen and what to listen for. But I'm watching our time. We've only got about 12 minutes left. Um, but so, the fact that this did not get much above 60 and then turned down. When I zoom in on this chart, the opposite of that positive reversal is where the RSI goes to a high, sells off with price, and then goes to a lower high and becomes more overextended to the upside. We're in a situation right now where we may have that. And this would create a negative off of this number. Uh, roughly, what is it there? 29.52 and... 29.37, 15 points. So it's telling me it's going 15 points below this. That'd be 28.79, 15 points below this. 20, uh, 28.79, what is this, 28.72. And then eventually it's probably gonna take out the 28.47 by 15. Minimum target would be long-term, or excuse me, long-term target would be around 28.30, which is back to the lows. So now, this, this was daily, and real quick, let me look at the weekly, because I'm not a short-term trader. You know, I've always had people at lectures I've done and presentations say, wow, with what you use, you just ought to make five or 10 day trades. I said, I'd rather put a position on on Monday, take it off a month later and make 10 times what I'm gonna make in a day. These are starting to turn down. Now these, Lines here were based on the lines or the closes we were using on daily. But that's starting to turn down because I see the nine starting to roll over. And this was that positive reversal trend line that we drew based on a daily. And look how it's come right back up to it from the underside. You never sell on the initial break of a trend line. You wait for a rally and a retest because that trend line should be resistance. So on an RSI weekly basis, your support is around 28.40. And that's a pretty good drop from here. It's gonna scare a lot of people. That red line is pivot point. Uh, traders on the floor use pivots for resistance, support, trend change. And it's usually high, low, high plus low plus close divided by three to get that red line. But I wait to close twice as much because it's more important. And it's also important because that's where your accounts balance is reflected in the closing price. The monthly, I even looked at the monthly before. We're in, the, in a point where this RSI is still losing a lot of momentum. 
And if it starts to turn down monthly, daily, weekly, back in July, I was looking at that close. Because on a monthly, we start, we had a bearish divergence on a monthly. It's usually just an overextension, but this was pretty tight. The tighter the signal for divergence or positives or negatives, the stronger the signal. And where the monthly was showing it, the RSI only got to 63 and never got back up to that 70 level. So there, I'm just telling people, be very alert, be very careful. Because that daily that I said could be potentially a negative is not showing up in the 70 or 60 level. It's right around less than 50. The lower the sell signal or the higher the buy signal with the positive or negative show up, the stronger the signal. So to get a negative reversal pattern form below 50 does further influence the downside and give more confirmation that it's trying to go down. But let me get over to a couple others because we're starting to run real short on our time, aren't we? You know, this is like going to the doctor. You know, when you go to Dr. RSI, it's like going to the regular doctor. You don't, you just don't get much time with the doctor. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have Before a new you're client. in there. You, I have a, yeah, I have a new client that, uh, I, yeah, while you're in there fixing one thing, why don't you uh, tune the engine up, you know, and it'll run better. <laughs> If you see something that shouldn't be there, take it out and get rid of it. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we just don't get much time with a doctor. <laughs> All right. Let me switch to um, every. I've been bullish gold, and I think your Wyckoff count has been pretty much bullish to gold. Yeah, gold's uh, been a great campaign for a while now. Yeah, and I've been bullish up until a couple brokerage firms agreed with me, and then that's when we put in that recent high at 1600 or at uh, – 1650. I'm not, or 1550, I'm sorry. Um, I like being, if you're standing alone, always remember if you're the smartest people, smartest person in the room, you're probably in the wrong room because you have to get education and never stop. I learn something every day from every person I run into. But, um, I was, look how that nine stayed above. Look at the moving averages on RSI up here. They got up to 75 and then it went sideways for a while. Then it went up there again. So and, the range rules are, are hard at work. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the nine and the moving average on close is hard at work because it's staying above 40. Yeah. And it went above 60. And then we started to build this longer term divergence, fair divergence. And it was about this time that I heard a lot of brokerage firms agreeing with my targets and saying 1550, 1600. I said, uh oh, must be near a top. We formed this last divergence. Here's a tight divergence, followed by another tight one. And then it rallied back to 58 and sold off. So on a daily, gold is a market that's not making, it's not usually going to make a spike bottom. Silver makes spike bottoms. Gold tends to build a base. And if this were to hold, you're gonna have somebody say, there's left shoulder, here's head, here's right shoulder, and we're headed higher. I still believe longer term it's still up because I'm looking at the weeklies as well. And that nine is well above our high line. And the RSI moving averages are well up. And this, all these bounces or sell offs down in here are well supported. And it's like a basketball game. Somebody takes a shot. When that ball bounces off the room, off the rim, you'll see a um, couple hands come up and keep tapping it up there. They're playing the game above the rim. This is what we're heading into, I think, with the gold market. The other thing is the dollar. And if they keep lowering interest rates, this dollar has been strong, strong, strong. It's weekly. Quick look at the daily. Daily's still strong, but I think it's starting to lose a little gas. Uh, it's burned up a lot of momentum. We're not seeing the RSI get up to where it was. It's having trouble up around 62, 63. Mm -hmm. So we might be watching that for some type of top. I will not short this dollar. You can talk to my clients. I've never said sell dollars. And they say, what do you think it's keeping? What's keeping it up? I said, everybody talking about it. 
Well, the, the dollar, the dollar has been quite strong and gold has been strong, which is not normal, not normal. And if the dollar starts to show that it has some kinks in that uptrend, then yeah. that could uh, be real supportive of higher gold prices. I believe so. I'm having yeah. targets uh, 16, 1650. And if we break 1650, I can see 1850, 1900. I've got some huge point and figure counts on gold. And we, yeah. you know, we, the, the readers of the blog, we've been following gold for a long time. And uh, gold, gold looks like a major campaign. I followed gold. It was one of the first markets I started with on paper charting, a graph and the values on every afternoon on dailies. And I remember gold 350. And I was setting these positive reversal targets for. 450, 500. Everybody in office told me I was nuts. Our chief technical analyst for the brokerage firm said, Andrew, I don't know what you're looking at. I said, it's up. And it looks like it's going to go higher. So same thing with silver. Silver went from under $4 to over 50. Markets don't lie. Traders do about their golf game, their sex life, and their uh, score on the golf course. <laughs> but the market doesn't lie. Listen to what the market is saying, see what it's showing you, and get yourself you know, on the right side of trends. One last thing was interest rates. Um, mm -hmm. uh, where did I put my interest rates? Real quick, because I know we're down to about two minutes. Uh, okay, indices, 10 year. Time just flies when you're- When you're having- at, When you're at the doctor's. Yeah, uh, there we go. Everybody this year coming into this year said the dollar or interest rates were going to bottom and go up. Look at this chart. That nine stayed below. Look at all this. Let me move this out of the way. This is um, put the sixty level in. This is the sixty level. Never really got above it. The trend stayed down. We had negatives along the way. I didn't see any positives in there. Now you got a little rising, but bullish divergence, folks, is not positive. It just shows it's overextended. You need to follow, you need to see the um, positive reversals to turn it up, and you need to see the range shift. And the other thing that we were pretty negative on was the uh, crude oil. It's in a wide trading range between probably 62 and 52, but I'm thinking from where we are now that we're probably, well, we're probably gonna go down and try this 52, but if we break 52, there's 50. And if I zoom out, there's not much else until you get down to much lower levels at like 45. That was my forecast off this last high. From 62, I said 52 support, and below that's 46. Wow. And I haven't seen anything to change it. Okay, so Andrew, we are we have about 30 seconds left, and any uh, thoughts, any summaries that you'd like to make? Uh, uh, just that I think you have to be very leery in, stop, in stocks. Make sure you've got stops underneath to protect yourself or consider buying puts. Uh, look for gold to move higher the rest of the year. Look for commodities, which are still in a broad basing and base building phase in all different markets, coffee, sugar, uh, grains. But I think we're getting ready to go in an inflationary cycle. And I think Fed, if I could say it, is behind the curve. Andrew Cardwell, thank you so much for being with us. And we're going to have you back soon. Take care. You too. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you.